Um, I'm ready, Bob. Helen Martha McGanius was the daughter of Greek immigrants, and she was my mother. When she visited from Florida, I would grab one large cardboard box after another, after another, from the luggage carousel. Each box was filled with pastizio, spanakopita, and other Greek meals she had made for my family. Love was a verb for my mom. I am not afraid to love. I love my work, family, friends, and mostly my children, Keegan and Cole. They are everything to me. I'm not sure what spurred these poses, <laughs> but the elevator lighting was great, and I love the photo. I try to emulate my mom and love people so they never doubt it. I say I love you a lot. As a little girl, I flipped through the pages of National Geographic and dreamt of being a photographer. I traveled around the world on those pages. The powerful images transported me away from life in the inner city. My mother gave me my first camera when I was a little girl, and I didn't realize the implications of her gift until after her death. I encourage everyone I know to love and follow their dreams. Keegan is a gifted photographer, and she just spent two years in Europe as an independent volunteer working with refugees. Cole, who is much older than this photograph of him, <laughs> is a gifted trumpet player who performs in a jazz band, and they have weekly gigs. My friend Audrey Hall took this photograph of me, and every time I see it, I feel like I'm floating in a sea of roses. <laughs> um, lately, I have been moved by quotes, and my favorite is by Albert Einstein. He said, I must be, be willing to give up what I am in order to become who I will be. After almost 30 years of marriage, the divorce I asked for is finally final. That magnitude of change is tumultuous, and it affects many people but I believe it is the right decision for the two of us. I am stepping away from who I was and making conscious choices of who I want to be. It is daunting at times, but it is more invigorating. Six years ago, at a time when my photographs were being featured in many of these publications, I chose to step away from my career to help save my then husband's business during a crisis. It was a rational decision based on our fam family's financial future, and it was the biggest mistake in my life. This year, <laughs> I resolved to lean into life and follow my intuition and rebuild my career. My instincts always guide me in the right direction, except when I'm in New York City. <laughs> I am emotive and believe that I have a sixth sense. I use rational thought to fine tune what I intuit, but analytical thinking does not guide me. I welcome serendipitous moments and the excitement of the newness of experiences and the mistakes that are inherent in anything unfamiliar. I am fortunate to have the support of friends, family, and colleagues during this time of transition. I could not be doing what I am without their love and support. I believe that people want to love and they want to be love. I believe that when one door closes, <laughs> you have the opportunity to rediscover life's options. You can wallow and get stuck in the failures of your previous decisions, or you can come to terms with your past reasoning and see all of the wonderful things that came from that time and move forward in a meaningful way. I believe that if you are open-minded, a new path will become clear. I welcome new adventures and the gifts of unexpected encounters. Recently, a friend wrote to me and said, our adversities in life should not define who or what we are, how we respond to them should be the determining factor. Photography is my passion. It is what I love to do. Um, the clicking of the shutter embeds that moment in time into my memory and it changes who I am. It is how I remember life and it is the language that I am most fluent in. I love people and I believe that when I see someone through my lens, they feel that emotion and it allows them to be honest and vulnerable with me. My gift is the act of seeing. I am Greek, and I see life with a lot of emotion, and I'm often moved to tears. My kids lovingly poke fun at me when I tear up watching some random encounter while we walk down the street, or even when I watch a commercial. I tell them I cry because I feel. I really love love. Photographing weddings and having my clients see and feel the way I experience their commitment to each other fulfills me. After witnessing hundreds of weddings, I still come home, and in a slightly choked up voice with my hand over my heart, I tell my kids about my new friends and how lovely they are, and they wonder, will I ever tire of meeting new friends? I love family, 
and creating familial histories. Taking portraits is a very personal process, and sometimes, surprisingly, even to myself, I find it more difficult than photographing a wedding. Many of my brides ask me to document their families as they grow, and I see it as a privilege. I am inherently curious, and editorial assignments satiate and stimulate my inquisitiveness. I love editorial stories because I can get to spend a day photographing people who live atypical lives, and every once in a while, I get to meet and have a couple of beers with a real live, humble superhero like Jim Posowitz. Photographing unfamiliar subject matter is challenging, and recently I started shooting musicians performing live and in sessions like this one of Luca Rodoni shot here at the Ellen. The process is unfamiliar, I get scared, I get nervous, but it's exciting to feel those emotions again. My work and meeting new friends enriches my life. By chance, I met my friend Matthew Robbins at a wedding designer from New York at a wedding conference in Arizona. It was one of those moments when I probably said out loud to him, oh my goodness, I love you. <laughs> Through that chance meeting, I now call Matthew's husband and many of his friends mine. I see the world through my lens and create narratives that hopefully capture the essence of what it is to be human and what, most importantly, what it is to love. Loving is a conscious choice and it changes people forever. Sometimes I imagine my yaya, my Greek grandmother, literally being forced to walk away from her home and country. And I wonder if she cried when she first saw this icon of freedom. I wish I had seen the gifts that my mother gave me while she was alive so I could thank her. Because of my mother's actions, I inherently define love as a verb. Her love reverberates in me, and I hope mine resonates in others.